In this video, I'm gonna tell you the key to winning fights in Fortnite. I had been feeling like my fighting was a little bit off recently, and so I did a speed run all the way to Unreal just in solos. And while doing this, I got reminded of what the secret is to winning fights. And that key is always try to stay ahead in the fight, constantly be on the lookout for opportunities to predict the enemy. We're gonna be breaking down some clips, but first, I wanna tell you guys about all-in-one 1v1s. We just made some changes to this map to make it way better by shrinking the box fight room to be more fast paced. We also got rid of some of the bad guns and made matchmaking faster. This is actually one of the best maps to improve at fighting because it puts you in every single fighting situation. Build fights, realistics, zone wars, and box fights. It just shuffles between them. So do yourself a favor and start practicing in this map. If you want to get the best practice possible, find somebody from a scrim discord or from my own discord down in the description. In these servers, you can find people that are your same rank and practice against them to try to get better. With all that being said, let's hop into some fighting breakdowns. There's going to be a couple themes that we focus in on today, the first of which is finding open peace. This first fight is a great example of that. Notice how the opponent only has the cone. He doesn't have the floor there. That's open piece. I slip in that floor and right away I have the advantage now because he already flipped up the cone, meaning if I edit this floor, I can take a shot. But there was more open piece behind him, so I claimed those back walls before taking my shot. The only thing is I should have placed a wall and made a window, that way I had a peek and I wouldn't have taken damage. But it was really good spotting that opportunity for peace control. I play it slow and heal up, and afterwards I use this broken item, just shooting to the side of his box and then claiming the floor to get in. A lot of times if you shoot it to the side of their box, they're gonna be focused on that direction, and then you can claim what's above them and get in like I just did there. Here's another similar example in Ken Bean's speed realistic maps against Ken Beans himself. He got the wall to my side here, which is really awkward, but when he edits this wall, I notice he doesn't own the wall in between us. So I managed to take a quick shot and claim that open piece control before he shoots. But that wasn't the only piece control that was open. He also didn't have the floor and the walls behind him. So I was able to claim all of this stuff, get up in his face and finish the fight. The other theme in the fights that we're going to be focusing on is predictions. This is the thing that I have been slacking on recently. In order to have the control in the fight, you need to be a step ahead of the opponent at all points in time. The way you do this is by trying to predict where they're going. You're not always going to predict perfectly, but the more attempts that you take on trying to predict the enemy, the sooner you're going to get them trapped. In the first clip that you watched, I forced the peace control. I placed a ramp in his box, which forced him out a different direction, and I predicted maybe he would go to the left. Sure enough, he did, and I was able to finish the fight. In the second clip, I was playing a nice little peek from above here, and after getting that peek, I slipped a floor over him, and he got walls in front of me. Rather than just trying to break through the walls, I try to predict him instead. And sure enough, he went the exact way I predicted and I got the kill. Like I said, you're not always going to predict him right first try. But think about it like this. Let's say he didn't go in this direction. What's the harm? I wasted a few builds and I had a potential chance of boxing him. It happens a lot where you peace control a direction you think they're gonna go and they don't go that way. It's okay, you just continue the fight. This next clip I did a different kind of prediction. His direction was moving towards the right at the start here. And I thought he might be going up layers to try to get away from me. So I went up a layer and claimed the wall to my right the second I got up that layer. Sure enough, I predicted that he was going in that same exact direction so I had that wall on him, edited it, and got the kill. These simple little predictions go a long way. In this fight, the enemy was just spraying at my wall. I lined up a shot and got a major health advantage. Now I could have just edited right on the opponent, but I felt like he was going to escape out the side before I even edited that wall. So instead of editing right on him, I edited out the right and cut him off in the direction I thought he was going. The best way to start a fight, obviously, is get a sneak attack, which is exactly what I do here. Immediately, I have a health advantage, he's on the run. In this situation, you want to keep them on the move and try to cut them off in different directions by trying to predict their movement. So right here, he's on a ramp. A lot of times when they're on a ramp, they're going to go upwards. So I was waiting for the second he edits either his floor or cone. As soon as that happens, I built a wall off to the side a layer up and got him cut off. 
He didn't even know I had this wall, and I got a free kill. Now, I don't mean to gloat, but this was probably the best prediction of the day. It may not seem like it, but it was perfect. I reset my brick wall right here to start healing up. Something you should know is when you reset a brick wall, a lot of times it's going to be really weak. Literally one shot to anything. And there's also a ramp right next to the wall, meaning the enemy could just jump in my box. So rather than making more space so that he can't jump in, I stayed right here and let this guy jump in. I knew it was going to happen. Sure enough, it did. So I pre-fired him the second it happened and finish up the fight. Mind games, that's the whole point of this video. How to peace control predict IQ wins fights, bro. All right, this is the last prediction clip that we're gonna be breaking down. I got a little bit of a health advantage to start this fight, nothing crazy. So I needed to still be a little bit careful here, but I got his wall one shot and I had an opportunity to sprint at the wall, shoot my shotgun and get in his box. This isn't a smart move because he has his shotgun out. So the second I do that, he's gonna shoot me. But I do it anyway and get a ramp over him. He still just is sitting there with his shotgun out. So this is the plan. I edit my ramp and reset it right away because I predicted he was going to shoot the second I made an edit. By resetting my ramp, he shoots my ramp and then I'm able to shoot him and finish the fight. It was a little bit close, but still I think that was a really good play. I'm including this clip because I think it's a really good example of how to utilize chop outs in a fight. I side jump up to the enemy's layer and edit a triangle. This way, if he tried to build a floor over top of me, it wouldn't connect. So I ended up getting a free shot here because that's exactly what he tried to do. But when I reset the wall, he is able to build up over top of me, but I know he's really not connected to much. So I edit my floor, shoot his ramp out, and then edit my floor again so it just disconnects it, and I shoot him on his way down. It's nothing crazy, but this is just a reminder, if a build fight is going on longer than you'd like, make sure you're paying attention for chop outs because that can be the key to ending that fight. The last ranked fight that we're gonna break down is right here. I was stuck in an awkward position. There was a cliff on my left and places I couldn't build on my right. I had to get out of here, and so what I did was fake out the right so that he moves that way. That way I could quickly go out the other direction and get out of that tight spot. And then to finish the fight, I hit a nice peace control clip here. I noticed he didn't have walls in front of him. I'm not really sure why, but when you notice stuff like that, you gotta go for it and you gotta go for it fast. So I was able to quickly get that wall right in front of him and then set up a peak and finish the fight. To end this video, I wanna give you guys a few extra places that you can practice your fighting. I already gave you all in one 1v1s, which I think is one of the best out there. But something that a lot of people struggle with is how to deal with third parties. Well, Ken Beans and I just worked together to make a third party 1v1 one map. Basically, two people start across from each other in a normal 1v1, and then there's two other people 1v1ing on the other side of a barrier. After 15 seconds, or if somebody gets a kill, that barrier disappears and you're allowed to third party the other fight. This will help you get in the mindset of always being ready to get third partied. So if you want to try out that map, code's down below. And the other two maps that I really recommend are the how to peace control map, especially if you're a beginner. This map will teach you from an absolute beginner level to a pro level how to peace control. There's voiceovers in the map. All you got to do is shoot the blocks on the wall and it'll play tutorials. And then the map that I use every single day for my warm up is the jive and practice map. In this map, there's aim courses, free build with bots section where you can constantly build up peace control bots along the way. There's a rapid peace control section, tunnel section, and more, so go check it out. I hope this video helps you guys out. More content on the way, so stay tuned. I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.